This video was sponsored by Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. Hello everyone! Today I wanted to show you all my video game slash Sonic slash Sega collection. I've been collecting for at least 5 or 6 years now. Some things in my collection came from the last 5 or 6 years, while other things I've collected throughout my childhood. I'm really excited to show you guys everything that I've collected and everything that means a lot to me, but before we get started, I wanted to talk about Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co. At the end of the video, we'll be opening up boxes from both. So what's Tokyo Treat and Sakura Co? Tokyo Treat is a monthly Japanese snack subscription box with the most exclusive limited edition and seasonal flavored Japanese snacks. And Sakura Co is a monthly Japanese snack subscription box where you receive more traditional and authentic artisan Japanese snack items. To break down the difference, in Tokyo Treat you'll see items like the Sakura flavored Pepsi or many of the different unique flavors of Kit Kats. And in Sakura Co you'll see items like tea, mochi, and even Japanese tableware. I've been receiving the Sakura Co boxes for a little while now and I use all of the Japanese tableware. Both boxes come with a different theme every month. This month's theme for Tokyo Treat is Sakura Picnic, an exclusively Sakura-themed box. And for Sakura Co, it's matcha and mochi. And don't worry, if you have any dietary restrictions, there's also a really great booklet that comes with every box that tells you everything that you need to know about the items in your food regarding its ingredients. You can also learn a lot about Japanese culture. Now, on to the collection. I do want to start off by mentioning this will not be my entire collection. Admittedly, I do have a lot of Sonic related stuff still in boxes in my closet, including a lot of different toys and plushies that I just don't have the space for when it comes to displaying everything. Someday I would love to have the space to properly show off everything that I own, but for now they're going to have to stay in storage. All of the stuff that I'm showing you here today are the things that I have on display. So this part of the collection is my Sega Dreamcast stuff, including my Sega Saturn titles. Along with the Dreamcast stuff, I also have stuff that are tied to the Dreamcast, like my PSO merchandise and PSO2 merchandise. You'll also see, again, some of my Saturn stuff here, like my Nights into Dreams and my Samba de Amigo copy, which is sort of randomly plays differently than any of my other Dreamcast games, but I just love it so much so I really wanted to show that off in particular. You'll also see that I have a bunch of like the Japanese Sega Saturn titles, as I do actually have a Sega Saturn that can play the Japanese titles, so I got all of those. It will be kind of tough to go over everything that I'm showing off, but I'm going to try to do my absolute best. Another thing we got here is my Sega Dreamcast controller, along with a picture of Sonic and Shadow uh, from Shadow the Hedgehog, really cool. I also have a bunch of my Switch games, PlayStation 2, Xbox, and Xbox 360 games here, and I have some buttons and a couple figures that I have placed here just because I do have the available space. There's Mochi, say hello to Mochi everyone. Right here is my Sonic classic shelf. I've got the Sega Genesis along with the controller, all of the original games lined up in the back, a couple of the movie Sonic toys from McDonald's and the original toys from a very long time ago, the Joyopolis tin topper, the Japanese Sonic curry, I do have that, which is super goofy. <laughs> I also have the Gamecom version of Sonic Jam, which is super cool. So yeah, here we are, kind of zooming in on some of the older toys that I have in my collection. I also have like a couple bootleg Genesis games off to the side here. I just got them from a friend and I think they're kind of cool. Now we're gonna show off my whole entire Sonic Mania themed shelf where we've got the Sonic Mania vinyl, we've got the art book, we've got the instruction manual. I love both of them so much. This is not Sonic Mania related, but this is just a cute little Sonic Advance Tales that I love having. Then of course, we've got the collector's edition of Sonic Mania in the box with everything still there. Here is my PlayStation 4 collection and Xbox One games. I don't have too many on these consoles in particular just because there are a lot of titles that I actually have digitally downloaded, along with these cute little 25th anniversary standees that I got uh, with my pre-order for Sonic 2 and Fire and Ice. I love them so much. I just think they're really, really cute. And right here, one of my favorite pieces in my collection is actually this Team Sonic Racing Media Influencer Box. Sega gave this to me a few days before Team Sonic Racing dropped. It included a physical copy of Team Sonic Racing, an exclusive Team Sonic Racing bomber jacket, and two digital download codes for my friends. And before you try it, the codes are already used, so <laughs> I do not mind showing off the codes. They will not work. 
I love this box because the box in general is such high quality and it comes with this beautiful Sega glass on the front, so I really, really wanted to keep it. Right here, I have all of my Wii and Wii U games. As you can see, it's mostly Sonic <laughs> related. I don't have too many Wii U games anymore. When I got rid of my Wii U, I got rid of a decent amount of my games. But then here we have my N64 games, along with Tales of the Music Maker on the Sega Pico. <laughs> So I decided to actually pull out all of my N64 games to show you guys which ones that I do have, just because they were stacked and it was a little bit tough to see. So yeah, I've got a bunch of these games. These are all mostly games that I collected as a child, actually. And later on, I had gotten some of these other titles like Conqueror's Bad Fur Day and some of these Japanese ported games. I haven't had a chance to talk about this really, really beautiful 25th anniversary Sonic that I have. It's a little glass statue. I got it from the pre-order from Sonic Toon Fire and Ice. It was a Japanese pre-order and I love it so much. It really brights up the room. Here is a close-up of all of my Dreamcast games. I've got a lot of different games here. I'm a really, really big fan of the Dreamcast era in particular, so I have different stuff like Skies of Arcadia, Fantasy Star Online, Space Channel 5, etc. Here is a bit of a closer shot of the CD that I got from the Sonic Colors pre-order in Japan. It is a CD with a bunch of Sonic music. And here is a little bit of a closer up shot of my PSO2 bookmarks that I got. Uh, actually, while I was visiting Japan a few years ago, they had a PSO2 cafe and they actually had these bookmarks and this little coaster. They had this little coaster, it was so cute. And here's another little PSO2 coaster. I, I have two coasters. Here is a closer shot of the Sonic 30th anniversary coin that came with the Sonic Colors Ultimate Japanese pre-order. And right here, we have my CD of the Sonic Adventure Music Experience that I got while I was visiting Japan. Here we go, we got a much nicer shot of the Nights into Dreams copy and the 25th anniversary coin that you got at the 25th anniversary party. And a little bit of a closer shot of Zamba de Amigo. And we're gonna show off some of these Sega Saturn games again. I didn't get a chance to show these off a little bit better. So we've got Sonic R, Sonic Jam, Knights, Christmas Knights, Fighting Vipers, and a bunch of other titles. I also decided to put my Balan ticket close to my Knights in the Dreams copy, just because they're very close in design. All right, onto the next shelf. We've got my GameCube collection. Now, a lot of these GameCube games, I definitely got while I was a child. <laughs> I played GameCube a lot growing up. We also have a bunch of other things here, which I'm really excited to talk about. Let's go ahead and zoom in on the GameCube games. We've got Heroes and Riders in Japanese, including a bunch of other games that, again, I, I grew up playing almost all of these. Most of these are my childhood collection, with the exception of the PSO and Skies of Arcadia copies. I also have these cute little Joy of Bliss buttons that I got while I was visiting Japan. And we're gonna zoom in on some of my cards. Now, this is not my full Pokemon card collection. I actually do have a binder for that, but I will not show that off because that would be an entire 30 minutes of footage if I were to show you guys that. But I will show you some of the ones that I do have on display here, which are my Jolteon, my shiny Mew, my Rocket Moltres, which I love so much, and you'll also see a first edition Flareon card. I love this little Tails art that I got. A friend of mine was visiting Japan for an event and they actually picked that up for me at one of the events. This is my childhood DS. That's my childhood DS. It had the Sonic Rush skin and I loved it so much. I couldn't get rid of it. It doesn't function at all anymore, but I love it so much because it's so cool seeing that old Sonic Rush skin again. Here is my Nintendo DS and Nintendo 3DS titles right here, along with my Nintendo Game Boy and copy of Pokemon Gold. Yep, there is my little Flareon first edition. And yeah, this is in general most of my handheld stuff. Now we're gonna show the top of my shelf, which has a copy of Tails Sky Patrol on the Game Gear. You also have my bag with my Sega Game Gear in it, including a bunch of games that are actually inside that bag. I do have that one DVD copy of Sonic Boom just because I actually appear in it in the Sonic Monopoly video. That Monopoly video is actually on that DVD, so Sega actually sent me this, so I think it's really cool. Here on this upper shelf, I have some of my comics and a couple plushies. I have Sonic and Tails plushies that I won from Joyopolis in Japan, and in the front here, we have a couple different comics. So I have my Sonic 2 Cinema exclusive comic in the front just because it is recent. As 
as well as this IDW variant of issue 27. This one actually was supposed to be given out at XSSW back in 2020, but due to the pandemic, these copies did not really see the light of day to the public eye. However, a good friend of mine at Sega gave this to me as a gift. It's so cool, I love it so much. So as I was recording more and more footage of my collection, I got really excited and I wanted to show you more of my comic book collection and some of the other really cool things that are not directly on display on the shelves. First, we have this super cute world adventure art that I actually received from a friend. This is actually her artwork. I had it displayed on my top shelf for a pretty long time. And here we have a Sonic X promotional piece. It is a promo writing board, and I actually got it from a friend in Japan. While visiting Japan a couple years ago, he actually showed this to me. It was part of his collection originally. I lit up and got really, really excited, and he actually decided to give this to me. So now I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys other comic books that I have in my comic book collection, starting with this free comic book day, 30th anniversary comic. I love it so much. We actually have two different anniversary comics, including uh, another IDW comic right here. I have a lot of comics, so I'm gonna try to go through these as fast as I can. We've got the Sonic the Hedgehog. I love this one so much. I don't mean to get super excited, but it's a Sonic Adventure 2 comic. Issue number 98, official Sega Dreamcast adaptation. Look at that beautiful 10th anniversary logo. I love it so much and I'm kind of geeking out. Uh, we actually have this little Sonic the Hedgehog hero <laughs> comic. It's super cute. It actually came with uh, a toy that I got, I think like five or six years ago in my PO box. We've got this 15th anniversary Sonic X comic, which I love Sonic X. You guys know that. So I do have a couple of these and the Sonic Mega Drive next level that you could get at the 25th anniversary party. Here we've got another one of my Sonic X comics. Super, super cool, 15th, oh, I love it so much. 15th anniversary, oh, so cool. Got another older copy here, issue 140 and a Sonic Boom comic back in the, back in the day. We've got a couple of the other older Archie comics. We've got another IDW piece. I actually remember getting this when I moved to Burbank. This was the first week that I lived in Burbank I picked this up. And we have another <laughs> Sonic Mega Drive! I have a couple of these, actually. Another one, woohoo! Alright, and we have more IDW stuff. I particularly wanted these just because they have Cream the Rabbit in them. You don't really see Cream the Rabbit a whole lot nowadays, so when Cream the Rabbit started prominently showing up in the IDW story, I got really, really excited, so I picked up a bunch of the stuff that had Cream. So yeah, there we go. Oh, look at the chow! <laughs> oh, here we go. We've got little five dollars. These are not comics, <laughs> by the way. Um, these are little five dollar things that me and Pete Capella had at Sonic Revolution. And we have this little movie Sonic book that I got during a promotional thing in LA where they were giving out free Sonic donuts. I may have the year wrong, but before Sonic Forces released, at an XSSW event, they actually gave out these really cool promotional uh, images of Sonic Forces. So I actually picked up a few of them, and here is mine. I also have the map, <laughs> little map from the 25th anniversary party. So it has everything there. You can, you know, see where we went for specific events. We've got a little Christmas Japanese sticker that I picked up in Japan, and this adorable little Sonic X sticker sheet that my friend gave me. We also have another media letter that I received from Sega when they gave me Sonic at the Olympic Games gear. Something else that I'm gonna go ahead and show you guys are some of my manuals. I actually do have these normally displayed on my shelves, but I decided that I'm gonna go ahead and get them protected and put them in some protectors before I put them back up on my shelf. I don't want them to get any messier than they kind of already are. They're very old. This is my favorite thing <laughs> out of my entire collection. It is the poster that came inside of this manual, actually. And yeah, I've got it hanging up next to all of my shelves. Up next, we have my perfect guide for Sonic Adventure 2, but if you flip it over, we also have Sonic Advance. It's super old, I got it back when I was a child, and yeah, it's in not the greatest condition. We also have the Prima's official guide to Sonic Heroes. I love it so much, 
<sighs> Such wonderful memories. And I meant to show you guys this, but here's the back of that Sonic X promo poster board. It has all of these really cute expressions. Here is my vinyl copy of Skies of Arcadia, the Eternal soundtrack. I love it so much. And actually here is my little vinyl player. It is nothing special. It is not the greatest and I would like to update it at some point. Right here, I have a poster from Sonic and Tails R. As you guys can see, it is signed by Mike Pollock, Ryan Drummond, and myself. Around Christmas time, while we were still making the show, I actually decided to print out a bunch of these posters and get a bunch of them signed so I can send them to people who were actually like on the teams. We gave them out to the musicians on the team, we gave them out to our artist, I gave one to Dorian of course, gave one to Trey, it was a really nice surprise. And of course, I couldn't help but keep one myself. I think it's so cool and I wanted to leave it here in my collection. Here we have my only first four figures that I will probably ever have because they're very expensive of the tornado. We also have some wonderful art by Sen and a bunch of stickers from different artists that I've purchased. During the Christmas time, I put these on my Christmas tree, but every other time of year, I just have them sort of chill in here. I love them so much. And we have my entire shelf dedicated to Sonic Adventure and Sonic Adventure 2 because I love it that much. We've got a blockbuster copy of Sonic Adventure DX, an English copy of DX, a Japanese copy of DX. We also have a regular Dreamcast copy of Adventure and the limited edition copy of Sonic Adventure. And in the back, as you guys can see, we have the vinyl that released a couple years ago. Got a little VMU and the Tails toy from back in the day. We also have the, the party pack of Sonic Adventure 2, the little guitar pick that I got from the Sonic Adventure music experience. This is a really cool little shadow toy that came in a loot box from I think about five years ago. We also have the wonderful Sonic Adventure 2 vinyl. We have a Japanese copy of Sonic Adventure 2 Battle on GameCube. Behind it, we have my American copy. Below that, we have my horribly messed up copy on the Dreamcast and you can't really see it too well, but under that, I actually do have the trial version. We're kind of running over some of the shelves that you've seen previously, but here is a bit of a closer up of the games that I have in my Switch collection, my Xbox 360 and Xbox collection, and some of the buttons that I got in Japan. And now we're gonna go ahead and move on to a completely different shelf. Starting off with a big old Sega logo right in the middle. I know what you guys are thinking. Oh my God, does Emmy really have anime figures? And the answer is, Yes, I have this wonderful Kuna from PSO2. I love it so much. I actually got it for Christmas a couple years ago. We also have this really, really cute Miku figure that I got at the mall of all places. Just cute little Tatsune Miku in like a little bunny suit. And then we have this really cute Cherry Blossom Miku that I couldn't help but get. And we're gonna go ahead and show off these cute candles that I got here. I actually have two Tails candles. Going to the next shelf, I have some Ojimajo Doremi merchandise. I don't have too much when it comes to Ojimajo Doremi. I wish I admittedly had more, but what I do have, um, it's a bunch of this Ojimajo Doremi makeup. They've had a couple different sets, and what I have one, I display proudly. I love them so much. We have some Tails art sprinkled in from another friend of mine, and we also have this really, really wonderful book that came from the Sonic Colors Ultimate pre-order in Japan. All of these back pieces are actually eyeshadow. We have a compactor, it's a foundation compactor, shaped like the tap from Ojimajo Dorimi, cute little Miku, and another Tails art piece that I got from a friend. Moving to the next shelf, I actually have a Sonic X Tails toy. I actually had this toy as a child, but at some point lost it, and my great friend Sky got this for me for Christmas a couple years ago. We have a Sonic and the Black Knight toy, and oh, hello Moji. <laughs> We also have the 30th anniversary box that came with the Sonic Colors Ultimate pre-order in Japan and a couple more candles. All right, now we're gonna go ahead and open up our two boxes today. We've got Tokyo Tree and Sakura Co. While we open up these boxes, let's go ahead and talk a little bit. First off, I just wanna thank you guys for watching this video and checking out my collection. 
A big question that I'm asked very often is what are my future goals when it comes to my collection? So right now, I'm still looking for Samba de Amigo Maracas, a Sega Saturn copy of Burning Rangers, and I'm always looking for more Sonic X related merch. Something that I did not show off for my CD and DVD collection, I have a lot of the older Sonic X American DVDs, but I still want to collect the original Sonic X Japanese DVDs. Other than that, the only thing left I could think of is finding more Fantasy Star Online merchandise, and I really would like to get that first Four Figures Knight statue. There's not a whole lot out there regarding Fantasy Star Online, the original, but I would love to find it. I want to go ahead and thank you guys all so much for continuing to support the channel. We're actually getting really, really close to 65,000 subscribers, and it means so much to me. Thank you so much. I mentioned in a community post recently that a bunch of stuff will be coming out soon. I want to let you guys all know that a lot of that stuff is on the way, and I want to, again, thank you guys for continuing to stay patient. As a thank you for being so patient for my upcoming stuff, I'm gonna actually let you all in on my upcoming schedule. I normally like keeping my schedule available for just my Patreons who support me on Patreon, but I wanna make an exception just this once because I haven't been posting as much as I like to normally. Soon, I'll be dropping a sleepy time version of Dear My Friend. I've been talking about this for a little while now, and it will be coming out very, very soon. On top of that, I'm also going to be uploading a full band cover of Night of the Wind. I also plan to drop a video where I'll be reviewing the Sonic 2 movie. I have a lot to say about the movie, and they are mostly positive. Now, reviews are not a thing, and they won't really become a primary thing on this channel, but I wanted to make an exception just this once, because this movie made me so happy, and I really want to gush about why it did because some aspects of the movie are things that I've been looking for out of Sonic for over 10 years. There's a lot of details that I would love to cover, and I will be doing that in a review. Be careful though, because my review will be containing a lot of spoilers. The last thing that I'm going to mention regarding my schedule is the big music video that I've been talking about and teasing for quite a while now. We still have a little bit of ways to go on, but I want to announce to you guys that I will be uploading a new original song starring Johnny Gioelli from Crush 40. I hope you all enjoy it and we really, again, appreciate your patience. We want to get it just right, which is why it's been taking a little bit longer than our usual stuff. It's more than just a song, we actually have like a music video to go along with it. And I will go ahead and show you another little preview right here. Here's your little preview for that. Again, I know it's not much to show, but I hope you guys are looking forward to it. That's going to be it regarding my schedule for now. But I also wanted to let you guys know that Sonic Revolution will be happening again this year, and I will be there physically meeting everybody. If you haven't heard about it yet, it'll be happening September 11th of this year, and I will be there with a table selling different things. At least a poster. I will at least be selling one poster. There are some other announcements regarding Sonic Revolution, but I'm gonna go ahead and keep them private and allow Sonic Revolution to make those announcements. I've talked about this a little bit in the community tab, but I also recently dropped a new mascot. Their name is Coda, and along with Coda, I've also released a new merchandise shop. It has Coda-related merch along with lyric shirts from some of my original music. I'll show off a piece or two from my merch shop right here. Admittedly, I did order them myself. <laughs> if you are interested in getting one of these, I will go ahead and leave a link to the shop in the description below. Also, let me know in the comment section if you did wind up getting something. Anyways, thank you guys all for tuning in and checking out my collection and hanging out with me while we open up these two boxes. I would love to know in the comment section, did you have a favorite part of the collection that I showed off? What was your favorite piece? I hope you all have a great day and I'll see you next time.